Coming up next on Headline Humboldt, the California Coastal Commission has approved the plan from Nordic Aqua Farms for the eventual disposal of its wastewater, clearing the way for progress on what could be a major new North Coast employer. Also, Zach Brown from the Karuk and Yurok tribes joins us to talk about a new documentary, Stick Camp, that profiles an ancient game that has long been a cherished and important tribal coming of age tradition. Coming up now on Headline Humboldt. From the top of Humboldt Hill, this is Headline Humboldt. I'm James Falk, thanks for joining us. I've recently been exposed through an emerging confluence of interests to the nature and wisdom of various aboriginal knowledge systems. These vary as widely as any other collection of philosophies, but there are some commonalities among them that I think highlight issues in our own current civilization and how we conceive of the world. In particular, indigenous groups often see themselves as being of the land where they've made their lives and homes for thousands upon thousands of years. And they use that geography as setting to help delineate changes in their individual lives. Their systems are often based on being a part of the land rather than above it, on helping to achieve and maintain overall ecological balance, and on the maintenance and furtherance of a sacred relationship between life and community. Excuse the generalities here and understand that there are as many customs and differences among Aboriginal groups as there are people within them. I do not mean to oversimplify or condescend. Luckily, today's guest, Zach Brown, joins us to talk about a new film highlighting an element of local tribal culture that has long been a tool to help young men grow up and learn how to resolve conflicts and approach the world in constructive ways. These sacred communal experiences are something we as Americans are mostly missing. We have sports and we have entertainment, but the mass of our society lacks a tangible connection to the land where we live and has largely eschewed the idea of conducting ceremonies in sacred spaces outside of a church building. The film, Stick Camp, offers a deeply intimate look at a segment of tribal culture not often seen by the general public, and it demonstrates how such connections between places and people can solidify a community and give them strength to, weth to weather difficult times in life. It's a moving portrait, and it premieres on Keat TV this Saturday at 6 p.m. While I'm not encouraging the world to adopt the sacred traditions of these North Coast tribes, I do believe that understanding the world and our societies through the lens of tradition and natural balance might help the rest of us figure out a better and less damaging way to be. But are we ready to listen? First, the news. The California Coastal Commission this week approved a coastal development permit for Nordic Aqua Farms, clearing one more hurdle in the long and complicated approval process. The proposed fish farm, slated for the Samoa Peninsula, had its wastewater discharge plan approved with conditions. The plant will raise yellowtail kingfish and will discharge more than 10 million gallons of treated wastewater per day. The effluent will emerge from an existing outflow pipe located more than 150 miles offshore. The commission placed five conditions on the permit, which primarily have to do with commitments by Nordic Aqua Farms to proactively monitor the impact from their discharged water. In its support of the permit, Coastal Commission staff listed a number of potential risks from the project, but said that available information indicates that worst case scenarios are unlikely. The plant is likely to produce hundreds of highly skilled local jobs. The Humboldt County Growers Alliance, along with seven small cannabis farmers, filed suit in Humboldt County Superior Court against the controversial Measure A. The suit claims that signature gathering efforts for the Humboldt Cannabis Reform Initiative, currently slated to appear on the March 5th ballot as Measure A, were based on a lie. If the signature gathering efforts for Measure A were truthful, this initiative never would have made it to the ballot, said Natalyn DeLapp, HCGA's executive director. It claims that Measure A's backers include materially false and misleading information that deceived voters into believing the initiative was about restricting large-scale cultivation and failed to include the full text of the initiative as required by law. Mark Thurmond, one of the Measure A organizers, said the HCGA is afraid to let voters decide. Quote, this is a desperate attempt to deny the voters of Humboldt County their right to cast a vote on Measure A, he said. But they should be trying to make their case to the voters as to why there should be no cannabis reform, why there should not be improved enforcement or protections on water and resident safety and welfare, etc. Instead, they are running into court at the last minute after knowing about the initiative for more than a year trying to interfere with an election, unquote. 
In case you were worried, let me reassure all of you that my ongoing interest in UAPs and UFOs has not waned. We've simply elevated that interest in those conversations to an entirely different forum. The YouTube podcast, Neon Galactic, hosted by yours truly. This week we posted a fantastic interview with best-selling author and religious studies professor Diana Pasolka. To give you a sense of what we're doing on our new YouTube channel, here's an excerpt from that interview which can be found in its entirety at youtube.com slash at Neon Galactic. And um, the books somewhat go together. So I have American Cosmic, which was published in 2019, which, you know, you described it very well. It talks about um, people who are affiliated mostly with the United States space program and also um, people who have had experiences with what are now called UAPs, unidentified anomalous phenomena, uh, previously UFOs, and then previous to that, flying saucers. <laughs> so there's been this, uh, this name change that's gone on in the 20th and early 20th cent uh, 21st centuries. Okay, so um, that book was, was an interesting book for me to write because it was a switch from my previous work in Catholic history and, um, you know, looking at miraculous events and things like that in uh, basically like aerial phenomena. Um, and so it was shocking to me as a journey into these communities of people who do this study of UFOs. And I actually uh, had not seen the X-Files. I knew about it, of course, <laughs> um, being a cultural phenomena. But I didn't expect it to be have some truth to it. So there was um, so there was a shock initially uh, in terms of you know meeting these people. And what happened after that was the when the book was published in 2019. Of course, in 2017, the expose in the uh, New York Times about the secret programs. And after that, in 2021, was the Pentagon's report that. Indeed, they're studying UAPs, and they've been studying UAPs um, for a long time. So Encounters was a look. It was, in a sense, a continuation of American Cosmic in that I, you know, a lot of people ask me questions about, can you feature more about the beliefs of these people and what they, you know, feature more of these people and their beliefs? Because we really want to know what, you know, what brought them to these beliefs and how has it impacted their lives? And so uh, Encounters basically features chapter after chapter, um, extraordinary people, some, you know, ordinary people with extraordinary experiences is probably how I should say that. So welcome back. Thank you for joining us. We are lucky to have Zach Brown in the studio with us today. Welcome, Zach. He is a stick game player and a coach for kids. And we're going to hear to talk about the game and also the film Stick Game, which will be premiering on Keat TV tomorrow, Saturday, at 6 p.m. And it's a beautifully made film. And uh, the director is, um, I have his name here somewhere, I wrote it down. St Steve Knox. Steve Knox, that's right, Knox. I've got it here. Okay, Steve Knox directed it and he did a fantastic job. It's a beautiful project, so thank you for joining us. Thank you. So uh, to get started, I mean, let's uh, <laughs> talk about how the um, the film came to be and uh, what you guys were trying to do in the making of it. Well, I uh, started working for uh, Trinidad Rancheria in the Tribal Court in uh, 2022. And I'm grateful and thankful to have an uh, awesome and amazing judge that I'm working with right now that gave me the creative freedom to start working on this, this project. Mm -hmm. Knowing that there's a, you know, a need, a need for this in the community, and it's something I've always been passionate about, uh, he allowed me to start working on this program, and what that entailed was having practices like all year long mm -hmm. and hosting workshops. The and then setting up an event for the stick camp was part of this process for the program, and then also setting up a tournament. Yeah. So. <clears throat> That's how this came to be. We started doing practices. We started uh, doing a number of things that led up to the the film. And then I got in contact with a family friend, <coughs> uh, Steve Knox, and the rest the rest is history. The rest is history. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, it's an interesting film for a number of ways because it talks about 
um, you know, basically how the community, the community tradition of stick game and sort of the family histories that are mm -hmm. intertwined in there and also about the kids and what they get out of the process. So we have a lot of things to talk about, um, but it, it reveals something in tribal culture that for a lot of years and generations has probably been sort of a private thing among tribal members. Mm. Um, is there a risk to taking that game out of that context and then showing it to other people? Or is there anything that you're worried about in that process? Um, I'd say the only risk is not exposing it to, to people. I've had uh, a number of people outside of the tribe actually train train with my team and play with my team. I've had people from uh, Humboldt State uh, football team and rugby players uh, just hop, hop on my team and, and play. And just being able to expose you know this part of the culture is, is uh, something you know something special. I don't think it's something that should be hidden. Yeah, absolutely. So go ahead. Um, so a, a long time ago, I mean, there was things in the in the village life that was just common knowledge to like everyone, mm -hmm. everyone in the surrounding area. And when I came to like the or medicine people or uh, people that were like really special in the community, in order to like learn learn from them, you had to get close close to that family or close to those family members and train with them for a long period of time to attain that knowledge. Yeah. So it was, it was a little bit different from like what you learn that was like common knowledge to everyone versus someone you had to spend a lot of time mastering something. Yeah, it's like a, different levels of privilege. Like yes. once you got to meet somebody and sort of prove your seriousness <coughs> and metal, you were able to learn those things. Yes. Uh, we have an excerpt to start off. Uh, so let's go to that and we'll sort of get a sense of the feel and aesthetic of the movie, which really is quite something. So let's uh, watch that first uh, clip, please. My name is Zach Brown, I'm your Rock and Krug, and right now we are at Sumate Village. This is one of the villages, or village sites where my, my family comes from. So we're having a stick camp, and this is the second stick camp we've had. The last one we held was in 2015. Well, it's an opportunity for a lot of young men to learn about some of the traditional training of the stick games. Hi, my name is Jeff Guido. I am a Yurok tribal member and also Talawa descent. And we're here at Sumig Village for 2023 stick camp. We're doing a lot of training, um, starting from the ground up, teaching these boys how to make their sticks, how to make tassels, teaching them the importance of training. Um, it was a big goal to teach them about managing their aggression. As males, we need to learn how to manage our aggression and use it in an appropriate way instead of taking it out in the streets and um, using anger in our lives in, in negative ways. We're trying to teach them how to use all of that aggression that we have as males in a positive way. The bonding of the kids, having uh, the kids be around strong men and leaders. Uh, some of these kids don't see that all the time and they're unaware of what that looks like. So having people who are strong, who are mentally tough, who will see the challenge and go through it and that type of stuff, you know, and they can learn it through sticks and have to be, you know, sitting down and talking to the kids. But they see the way we are on the stick field. They see the way we are as people and as uh, mentors here at the camp. And the kids will see that whether they know it or not. So, I mean, of course, the question arises, well, what is the actual game? You know, I mean, I, I don't expect to know how to play it by the end of this, but can you give us a sense of what the mechanics are and what the goal of the, of the game play is? So the, the game is played on a field anywhere from like 100 to 150 yards long. It's kind of like a rectangular shaped field, like a football field, and soccer field. Mm -hmm. And there's three main positions. It's a three on three game. And the three positions, uh, there's a center man, which is called the scratcher. And you have a anchor on one end of the field. And then you have a runner. Your anchor is supposed to be like one of your strongest guys. And he's supposed to hold down the runner. And then on the opposite side, you have the runner. It's kind of like the same same thing. So you like want two the teams with the same positions, right? Yes. Yeah, and yeah, then okay. the scratchers, uh, they start off in the middle. And 
the guys in the in the center are called the scratchers they use these tossels and they start off one of the players starts off with the tossels in their mouth like this okay like that yeah and then we use these sticks yeah um to scrape on the ground so there's a way that we scrape on the ground mm -hmm. And the goal is to like drop these tassels out of your mouth, and as soon as it hits the ground, that means it's it's go time. It's in play. Or whatever. Yes, it's like kind of like the tip of the ball in basketball. So this is one of my my favorite sounds here in this. Like every single game, right before each point starts, you you hear someone yell "lock up." Yeah, uh, it just gives me chills just like just hearing <laughs> it. But um, your guys on the end, the the anchors and the runners, start off with their sticks in their mouth like mm -hmm. this. Like that, and yeah. there's a lockup position where we grab each other's arms and hold hold them firmly. Kind of like with wrestling, where you're yes. in a position before the start of it. Yes. Right? Okay. So you you start off like that, and you have to be paying attention to when those tassels drop. And as soon as they drop at the middle of the field, that first flick can go into a, a, a really short game or a really long game. So the object of the game is to get the tassels to one end of the field. Okay. But you can grapple with your stick. You can trip someone with your stick. You can actually use the the stick to like tie someone up with. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of to tangle uh, up their limbs or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, you can use a stick as as leverage to like grab grab someone. So there's a number of things you can use a stick for. Okay. Um, besides hitting the tassels, so it's um, best two out of three, and whoever gets the first two points like wins wins the game. Yeah. But there's a lot of elements that go into it because you can tackle people. Yeah. You can uh, wrestle them into the ground. Um, let's see. The, there's the, this is effectively the ball of the game, right? Yes. So a sc scoring a point is basically getting it past a certain line, or yeah, like there, there's. I mean, there there's a line that you have to cross in yeah. order for that point to score. Okay. So the some of the the biggest rules are like you can't obviously jab someone with your stick you can't punch or kick anybody yeah but there are no timeouts so, so once you, it's once the thing is in once the going. thing's in like you have to keep playing until a point scored yeah so this is where that endurance comes in sure sure and all that training uh can pay off um but if you get injured on the field unless it's very severe they won't stop the game okay. until a point scored okay so you have to stay and then after that point scored you can have a new player sub in for you okay so that <clears throat> that's kind of a little bit of the intensity of the game yeah and now you mentioned a short game and a long game so basically the guy has a stick the tossels drop and if he launches it like a long way away then that's a long game probably involves more running no so the okay. um if if he hits the the tassels really fast mm -hmm. and he breaks away from the guy he was scratching against and just takes off running, he hits it a, a few times without missing the tassels at all. It can be like 15, 20 seconds. Yeah. Wow. But if everyone's pretty evenly matched, I've been in games where it was like 45 minutes. Yeah. Just for just for one point. For one point. Yeah. Wow. And I've heard of. Uh, Games going even longer than that. Now this is also a like a lot of sprinting, right? And yes. I mean, so you're sprinting, starting and stopping, a lot yep. of that kind of stuff. And you said it's two points out of three, so basically, uh, there's probably people who are really good with their sticks. I yep. mean, like different skill positions, different like. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is not in our list of questions, but I'm fascinated. By <laughs> it. Uh, what do you look for in a player in terms of like if you were going to have a teammate, say? Mm. I mean, what's your strength, and what would you think would be the best compliment for you going into a, a, a match? Um, the way I trained, um, I had to do a lot of endurance training. Uh, we had to do a lot of uh, long distance running. Uh, when I first started playing uh, with a man, I was uh, 17. I'm 38 now, but when I was younger, my my brother was 18 and my cousin was 19. Yeah. And they used to beat me up pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> but we, player, we were the youngest team in the men's di division. And they, they told me, I'm like, you have to be good at all positions because we're going to switch up. Yeah. And you have to be a good at anchor. You have to be a good runner. And you have to get good at scratching. Yeah. So that's how I trained with all, all the players that I had on my team, you know, throughout my life. I was like, if you're going to train with me, you gotta be good so you're going to be running, you're going to be running a lot, and you're, you might be the runner, you might be scratching, and yeah. you might be anchor. So I had to like train and work with people 
there were some people that were like strictly anchors, but most of the people I've trained with and worked with like throughout my, I would say stick career, yeah. uh, has been, you gotta be good at it, all of them. Now, one of the things that I appreciated in the film, and <coughs> this is something that I was trying to get at in the intro, is that this is not just a sport, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you're, like you, football in America or baseball, you go out, you buy a glove and a mitt, you're like, oh, I'll throw it in the closet, grab it, play it out. Like these are valuable items. Like people yes. make these things and it's not a for nothing process. Like in the film, you have the kids and you're teaching them how to do it. And it's mm -hmm. like a very, uh, I don't want to say sacred because I, I don't have that significance for myself, but it looks like you guys are taking it as a like very serious, important process. And you gotta be mindful of what you're doing and mindful of what you're trying to produce. Um, can you talk a little bit about the process of making it and what you're trying to convey to the kids when you do that? A lot so the um, I had a picture that I um, sent, and it really encapsulates a lot of the, this entire process. Like making the stick and tassels is one of the most important process, yeah. be besides all the training and um, you know the dieting. Um, just a number of things that go into that. Uh, this is the most important process: is making a good stick, yeah. and making a good set of tassels. And w the way I was trained is like, once you make these, there's uh, certain places, and you could really do this anywhere, but you would fast. Okay. For, you'd fast for a, a number of days, or as long as your body can handle. Yeah. And the point of that fasting is, um, our people uh, would do this to become like hyper-focused, mm -hmm. where this is all you're thinking about. Yeah. We, would, we would do this with hunting, fishing, and a, n a number of things where you'd fast before you go hunting, you'd fast before you go fishing, and you'd fast before you do a number of things, but it's to like focus your energy. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of the time and energy that you put into like making this, you want all that good energy to go into what you made because this is gonna be used like throughout your life. And if it's something that's of sig significance, you know, people will use that or, you know, look at that or maybe even use it further on down, you know, down the line in your family after you passed on because it has, you know, that much of an impact for the down. people. Yeah. Yes. Um, in the film, you have a, there's a clip, we're gonna play that next, where you have the kids and you're starting to go through that process. And I think it's, it's beautiful. Um, and so if we can run that second clip real quick, we'll talk about it afterwards. One of the highlights that I had was when we went to the beach and we had all of these little boys sit quietly for about 10 minutes straight. And so um, when Zach was leading it and he said he wanted them to sit quietly and think about what we're here for for 10 to 15 minutes, I thought, boy, that's pretty ambitious. But to watch these young boys be able to sit still and, and be quiet and just be in the space that they're in for that amount of time was pretty amazing. Today was awesome. We got to go down on the beach, and anytime um, I made a stick in the past, I was always told it was important to fast and make medicine for the stick that you made and the tassels. So I wanted to teach that to the kids and to see the kids listen and be patient when I had asked them to be quiet to think about something really positive and see themselves in the future and how they're gonna use that stick and just think of something good. And that was one of the highlight moments for me watching the, watching these kids, you know, pay attention to listen and to do this together as a group. That, that was one of my big highlights. So you kind of described it there, but I mean, like what you were talking about is like teaching these kids how to approach the game. Can you sort of describe for me how important it is to teach that to youth today, given the, everything that they're surrounded by and the lives we're all kind of leading, how different and important this kind of focus and, uh, you know, um, I don't know, uh, you know, energy is for making something so intrinsic? Yes, um, so I, I've worked with a few youth um, like through, throughout my life where they got to experience what it's like um, working 
and fasting and doing some training around this for, for a longer period of time. But for, for some of the youth I was working with at this camp, it was their first time fasting. Yeah. And we, we had a, you know, a late dinner, but they you know, went all night and they went over 12 hours of uh, fasting. Which is a long time for which kids. Is, <laughs> which is a long time for, for a number of kids, but they were all up to the task. And when we got down to the beach and I got them to sit down, I told them, so we're gonna do this for about 10 minutes. I'm like, I want you guys to sit down, be patient and think about how you want to use this the rest of your life and put all that good energy into like what you just made. And I went over 10 minutes. Uh, we actually went up to about a half an hour, but it was just amazing to see because all these kids I've uh, worked with a little bit um, since they were younger and a lot of them are pretty, pretty wild. And yeah. once you get them all together, it's, uh, yeah. it's, it's hard <laughs> to like keep them quiet. Like sure. all, all day, all, all night, it's just like, you know, it's just a lot of noise, a lot of activity, but just to see these boys like make that transition to being completely patient, silent, and really take that time and energy and focus on like, you know, what they just created. Yeah, and, and building something for the future, you know? And yes. Positive intention. Um, we have about two minutes left. Um, one thing that we wanted to talk about was how you think that this is, what this does for your community and I mean, I guess the broader community in terms of what, what role this game plays and how it might work into the future. I mean, what do you, what's the impact you're looking for? Um, so it, I'd like to get into the, you know, dispute resolution. Um, yeah, absolutely. Which so was a tradition with it. This was used to settle disagreements and potential battles that would have happened otherwise, right? Yes. So we, we had like three steps. Um, one was like verbal communication. If we couldn't talk things out, we'd move into like a, a, a stick game mm -hmm. where it became more physical. And that would be uh, the, the step after, you know, the, the verbal communication in order to like prevent war. Mm -hmm. So we didn't want to have to have loss of life. So this was the next best step in like settling things. Yeah, that's amazing. We, we got a minute left. Um, okay. Real quick, what's your favorite part of the film? Uh, favorite part of the film? Uh, definitely uh, there's a scene down at the beach where a couple of the boys were all standing around. It, it, there's a short clip that you know got heavily edited, but yeah. the, the match between these two boys down at the beach is their yeah. first time doing it. Yeah. But they had so much fun and just seeing that excitement on the kids and like everybody you know, cheering them on, yeah. that, that, that was huge. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. Thanks so, for coming on the show. So, yeah, thank I appreciate you. it. Appreciate your work. Thank you. Uh, that's it for tonight. Uh, this was a good show. Uh, I got chills for some reason. So anyway, that means it's good broadcasting. Uh, stay tuned. Stay informed.